to another episode of Music with Matt. Today is going to be a super fun, exciting, and very special episode because it's the first of hopefully many more interviews that I'm going to be doing for this series. I'm incredibly thrilled and honored to start out these interviews with none other than the amazing sound artist, composer, vocalist, instrumentalist, and record label owner, Yao Blanc. I've had the distinct pleasure to see Yelp in both Boston and Chicago on numerous occasions, and I was really hoping to get to see him this year, but of course all of that changed, so maybe I'll get to see him next year, either here in the U.S. or maybe in Europe. And like everyone else, Yelp's uh, touring plans changed drastically this year, but that didn't slow him down musically at all. He has been super active. He has uh, released a couple of very exciting albums this year, a new book, uh, reissued some old out of print recordings, and has just all around been very active. And it's just a treat to hear all of the amazing new projects he's been doing. One of which will be coming out tomorrow. The music you have been hearing in the background up till now is a sneak preview of that. We're going to talk about that new release and so much more. So stay tuned. Here we go. And I wanted to first ask you, uh, all things considered, how has 2020 been for you? I'm sure it's taken a much different direction for you, uh, but you've still stayed quite musically active, uh, you know, with, with releases and such. So I'm just curious how, how 2020 was for you overall so far, since we're almost finished with it. <laughs> yeah, well, um, yeah, the first blow was uh, that in, I had this wonderful U.S. tour uh, lined up in uh, right. late March to mid-April, and then I had to just cancel it uh, right. because of the travel ban. And yeah. Um, yeah, well, I um, uh, what's I I get a lot of fulfillment in, in making new things. I've been uh, working a lot of visual material uh, mm. over the summer, and um, also some composition and sound, some sound poetry, and some texts. So yeah, I'm. Uh, I've always been also to a large degree a, a maker of things um, and many musicians who are mainly improvisers have much a much harder time and, and so I, I miss performing somewhat less than, than many improvising musicians I think. Sure. I was wondering about that. But you did get, uh, you did get to do a few shows uh, in Europe this year, right? Yeah, just a few. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. I did, I did two nice duo concerts with uh, Terry X. Mm -hmm. We recorded and we'll we're making a, a cassette of uh, early next year. Oh, and, great! Um, uh, yeah, and I did a few solo things. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I actually want to backtrack just a little bit back to May, I believe, with uh, which saw a release of Retirement Overdue. I love that name, but I sure hope that you don't retire anytime soon, actually. <laughs> no, just, uh, I, I thought I'd give the band a name that I have to sure. fight against. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <you> know. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's yeah, a lot actually, of fun. I, yeah, I thought of this name and, 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 and the, the, the guys I wanted to ask for it. Uh, in the year I turned, I was turning 65. This was what, two years ago, 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, um, um, they were all happy to join me. And um, of course, with Frank Rosalie, I had been working in the past. We did this uh, uh, quartet uh, at the hideout in Chicago in 2012. And mm -hmm. the recording with his uh, Puerto Rican music where I made my debut as a uh, uh, salsa singer, so to say, <laughs> of sorts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's such a great album. And then you've also, during during this quarantine, you've had a lot of time to uh, digitize or, or at least upload some of your out of print material, which has been nice to get oh, some of yeah, like these old yeah, cassettes. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, of course, we're talking about then for tomorrow, you have a new release coming out. So tell me about this. This is uh, some uh, old material, it looks like, uh, as well as some new material, but it's all we're all hearing it for the very first time. None of this is, uh, this is all brand new for our ears anyways. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I thought, well, as, um, uh, in, in my view, the second decade uh, of the century runs from 2011 through 2020. So I thought mm -hmm. as that decade is running, 
uh, towards its end. I, I yeah. look what I have and uh, what would make a, a nice, uh, generous album. It's going to be an hour and 45 minutes of music. Mm -hmm. And um, nothing has been released. Only the one piece has been released in 5.1 surround sound on a right. DVD by a Pogus by Al Margolis a Pogus Productions. But I, uh, over the years, five years or so, I have been able to sell just four of those. Ah. <laughs> there's, a, I think, a very small overlap between those people who have a 5.1 five surround system in their homes and those that would like my music. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what I was the kind of people who have who have um, upscale uh, or state of the art home uh, cinema. <laughs> yeah, when I was listening to this album, I was actually thinking about, and probably maybe because you mentioned the the five point one, but I was thinking about um, how good some of your works sound or could sound, and I was wondering if uh, you are, if you have the chance occasionally at venues to set up uh, multi channel works or, or uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've uh, that's great. Um, um, uh, especially the uh, one piece where I f feed my uh, my voice into four or six microphones. One, one mm. piece is purely vocal. Uh, it's called um, Polyphone. There's actually mm -hmm. a, a, a CD version on CD, but that right. was um, I, commissioned by uh, this. Uh, Institute of Electronic Music at Stanford University, the Karma. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I was there and, and developed the piece there. And I have performed it quite a few times in uh, different countries. And there's also um, the, um, that came out recently on CD now, uh, the two have done with the Judgment of God, the, the Arto piece. I do right. uh, uh, a four channel version of that with uh, also with um, six microphones and four mm -hmm. channel electronics. I've done that um, uh, several times in like at the lab in San Francisco and Mexico mm -hmm. City and in, in, uh, uh, in, in Canada once. Yeah, sure. But of course, there are not that many opportunities for, for multi channel works. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, where there are, are opportunities, I, I, I like to, to try to find them. Of yeah. course. Yeah, it, it just, I realized on listening, especially to that first track uh, on this uh, upcoming release, just how, how well that would work with like, you know, a really good uh, system somewhere. <laughs> it would be great. Mm -hmm. um, I have another really specific question. I noticed something. So one of my favorite releases of yours uh, is Joyous Junctures. I just absolutely love this. And um, I was able to actually travel uh, in January this year. Uh, to Europe and uh, that entire trip I was listening to that album that was like my travel soundtrack and oh, I wow. just got so used to this uh, this computer voice and the, the computer sounds on, on that specific album which I noticed were a little bit different than all of your other computer uh, music and I heard that again on this album that same voice and that some of those same timbres and I was just so thrilled so I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about that uh, voice, that computer generated voice there. I, I know it was reading some of the uh, poem that you have yeah, on the, the yeah. new. Uh, and the new, on this piece, I made it read some of my crazy angle twist uh, texts. Right, uh, right. Yeah, I've, I've used them off and on also on the, um, um, uh, to good effect on, on, on the, on the, um, uh, Traces of Speech album. There's mm -hmm. one, one uh, piece where you have um, two, two computer voices, one speaking German and one English, but they read a crazy sequence of uh, uh, underscores and colons and um, whatever, whatever you have. Uh, <laughs> which are not sure. Letters. So, and they, man they managed to go through all that material at, at, at a very fast pace. So, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, you can, you can just, um, I use the, so sometimes I've used um, the, the the voices that that you just have on on, on the Macintosh computer, but wow. I also bought some high quality voices. Oh uh, wow! From uh, in different languages uh, mm. that uh, that are somewhat better, and you have more control over the speed and sometimes even the mood. So mm. yeah, wow, 
Wow. Yeah, that, that was just re really incredible. Uh, I, I, that was, you know, I always like hearing new music, but sometimes I always like to have a little bit of familiarity. And when I heard that, that same exact voice and some of those timbres, I said, oh, this is so much fun. I just love it on there. Um, I, I will try uh, to use different ones in the future then. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it would get boring, I think. Well, the, the ah. funny thing was, uh, I did. I actually did um, uh, a radio play with really with a story in, um, right. uh, but in, in Dutch, and I used one uh, a, a Dutch female voice. And yeah. a little later, it turned that they, they had new local trains in Holland, and they used the, the same voice in the train. <laughs> oh wow! That's incredible. That is incredible. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the new book uh, that you also have out this year, uh, the, the limited edition book that came out with a CD. Oh, yeah, the, the Arto. That was right. uh, a long term wish for me to do something uh, with that. And, hmm. um, I, and um, I was actually the, um, the publisher. My friend Hartmut Andrichuk of the Hebriden Verlag in, in Berlin was eager to do that uh, as soon as the Arto work became a public domain, which was mm -hmm. uh, uh, last year. Sure. So, um, uh, before that, it was really difficult because the estate and the publishers were uh, very uh, dif difficult and didn't give any permission and so. But now uh -huh. it's, uh, uh, it's more than 70 years after his death, so it's public domain now. And right. um, uh, then, um, yeah, I uh, I was thinking of it, how shall I do it? And then I um, I had this one page, um, which uh, actually it happened in 1994, when I was performing in Chicago at uh, mm -hmm. the time place Randolph Street Gallery. Uh, mm -hmm. as, uh, as I shared the bill with Paul Dutton from mm -hmm. uh, Toronto. And um, and when I, while I was reciting fragments of Arto, I got this nosebleed. So the, oh. the drops of blood came onto the page. And, oh, uh, no. I had to go into the green room for for a few minutes, and Paul sure. jump in to take over the show for me. And mm -hmm. but then I, I so I had this page from 1994. Still, I had it uh, framed in my studio, and the blood mm -hmm. had turned sort of purple, purplish brown. And, sure. Uh, uh, I thought, well, I used, I will use this page as a, a starting point for the, for the book. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I scanned the page and I made uh, 48 other images based on fragments of that page or the whole page. I did a lot of things. I, uh, I, I printed on transparent and put it on, on, on my window. I uh, sprayed all kinds of stuff and s from mm. soy sauce to, um, to <laughs> acrylic spray paint on it. Mm -hmm. And um, I used two different types of microscopes. Mm. I, um, the one that, that you can uh, see through uh, uh, and, and the one that you can just see onto a, a surface. And yeah. Uh, drawings and digital digital manipulations and everything, and um, so then after I did the images first, and then I started to make a CD with also forty nine tracks, uh, mm -hmm. uh, using the, the bit of text that was in the corresponding image, and. Um, and uh, so 49, some tracks are really short. The shortest are actually yeah. th three seconds and the longest are around three minutes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Um, and those are still available from, from you uh, directly, I believe, right? Yeah, they are available from me directly and also from, from the publisher. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's on my website, jabblong.com. Right. And on, under um, uh, recent, uh, recent editions. Uh, yeah, or latest editions, I think. Yeah, sure. It's on the um, top of the list on my website. Yeah, right. Back to the new release that's coming out tomorrow. Uh, so I was really excited as a primarily instrumentalist myself. I was really excited to see that you have some uh, instrumental pieces on here now, like uh, the piano piece and then the organ piece was also very, very intriguing to me. Um, do you, how, how much uh, instrumental music do you write? Because uh, I know you, you do mostly vocal and electronic, but this, do you have uh, 
a, a back catalog that we don't know about of piano pieces or, or violin pieces, I'd be really excited. <laughs> well, I, I, um, uh, I started off even before working with the voice, uh, composing uh, pieces, um, very simple tunes of, uh, at first, but mm -hmm. um, when uh, in 1980, I, uh, I moved to Amsterdam and I, I took um, uh, I, I do musicology, uh, mm -hmm. where well, uh, the, 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 I learned formal, some formal things about uh, counterpoint and uh, history of music and so. But also, sure. um, there were some uh, somewhat older students who were very much into um, av well, twentieth century avant-garde music, uh, mm -hmm. things like Morton Feldman, John Cage, and right. so on. So I got really into studying and in that music. So I and and got to. Um, to compose more um, more compl complex and more uh, advanced uh, pieces, um, I, I have I had this band uh, called Splinks, uh, right. which grow, grew from a, a quartet in 1983 to a 13 piece band in our last release, a double CD consensus of 1999. And so those right. are all my compositions. And uh, one other thing I wrote. Um, uh, a saxophone quartet of about 45 minutes. It's mm -hmm. now also on my band cap. It's called Sarmatian Time. And this was uh, for a dance uh, performance. And off and on I've written instrumental music and um, well, the, um, uh, some, some, some pieces uh, have turned turn out just too difficult to, to, to be played by human beings and uh, oh. <laughs> I'm realizing them on a, on a computer. Um, sure. And well, it's, um, I had this new piece called uh, Traffic is Fun for, for my uh, retirement overdue band. Um, and uh, this is very, very difficult to play, but I think we we will manage. We'll manage. So <laughs> it was we would be a challenge to 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 we haven't played that in public yet, only in a rehearsal. But I see. Yeah, but yeah, some some things you, you can only do on on a computer, and um, sure. And I'm yeah, well, of course, you have to breathe some life into the sound that uh, that it right. doesn't sound like a machine. And, sure, uh, sure. That's 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 a lot of work, but I'm 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 trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My uh, last question for you is: so I I just absolutely love how many different uh, things you're always doing and and always involved with. I mean, you you have your own projects, you have your record label, you have compositions, you have uh, electronics, visual art. How do you? Uh, What's your process for working on it? Like, is it, uh, do you have it maybe like one day or one week is spent on one thing, then you move to the next, or is it just uh, what, you know, always changing? Uh, I'm just curious how, how you divide your time across all these different projects. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I don't know myself. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm very happy that I got into making these drawings. Um, yes, it's very relaxing for me, and um, um, it's also uh, it's, it's it's gratifying because you see the result pretty fast, um, and um, yeah, I I use some really involved uh, pro, pro, uh, procedures for composing and also for preparing some computer designs for my uh, drawings. So sure. Was, this morning I was uh, for an hour and a half working on a new uh, uh, program to, mm. to generate uh, a visual structure. Um, after that, I'm I'm happy to just uh, get some paper and make a drawing. And, right. Uh, or yeah. Uh, of course, it's. Um, um, Sometimes, yeah, the the whole thing, the the, the correspondence, uh, and uh, I, I really, well, it's different now, of course, but um, it, it's all, always asking a lot of energy to uh, to try and get performances, of course. Right, and, right. Um, especially with uh, with this new band, 
and I spent so, so much time to to try and get it to play. Uh, right. Yeah. So, but I, I I don't I don't I usually I have a a, a studio here in 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 my town Arnhem, uh, mm -hmm. about, about a fifteen minute walk from from my home, and um, there. Um, it's actually in a building with, with, with a lot of workplaces, but mostly for uh, it's mostly like um, web designers, uh, oh, this kind, okay. of, kind of uh, people who are into some kind of design or book publishers and things. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. mostly are really nine to five people. You sure. Know? So, uh, uh, which m means that I, during office times, I cannot make a lot of noise <laughs> after. Uh, in the evening or on the weekends, I, I, I can make recordings there. I have mm -hmm. also have, um, uh, I've made quite a few recordings, not only in my studio, but in, in like in the staircase and uh, oh, sure. in the kitchen of the building. So if, to get different kinds of acoustics. And so I'm happy that I, I can have that, um, that's to, that place. Right, right. Yeah, well, it's also nice to divide my time in working at home uh, between working at home and working there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it, it's definitely great when you can separate your, your studio from your home and, and be able to just change the space once in a while instead of being at home all the time, as many of us are right now. But yeah, it, that's that's really nice uh, to have that space to do that. So I will have um, links for everything that we've talked about in, in the description of my video. That way people can access, uh, especially the new album on Bandcamp tomorrow on Friday, as, as well as all the other albums we have talked about today uh, and to your website. So I hope everyone uh, watching uh, will check that out. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on. I really appreciate it. And I really hope that uh, next year I will see you in Chicago uh, or somewhere, or maybe I will see you in Europe. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any suggestions of who I should interview for future episodes, let me know. And please check out Yelp's music. You are really going to be in for a treat. See you next week.